and welcome to the second video in the series about making a baptismal font. In the first video, you saw me using Vectric Aspire software to create the tool paths to cut this shell, which is the basin for the font. And I used a, uh, a, a piece of clip art that came with Aspire. Well, in this video, we're gonna go from the computer screen to reality. This is some of the American holly that I, um, I, I cut and milled and dried back when I lived in Virginia, so I've had this a number of years. These are particularly wide pieces I was able to get, and um, it's said that if you, if you cut the trees in the winter, the wood is lighter color. So that's what I tried to do. And you can see, it's like for example on this board, it's fairly light color, and that's before I've planed it. When I plane it, it's going to be even uh, lighter in color. So what I'll do is I'll cut 18-inch um, sections, trim them up, and stack them up to make a 18 by 18 by 3-inch tall block. And that's what we're going to use to, um, <clears throat> on the shop bot to cut the, the uh, shell. Well, I took those planks of holly, uh, cut them into 18 inch lengths, and then split them down the middle because they all had a little bit of a uh, cup to them. And then uh, took those pieces, planed them down so they're all the same thickness. And uh, basically, you know, this is a basic 18 by 18 by three inch block. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna butt glue each of the pieces of a single layer together, and then run them through the sander get them all nice and flat, and then glue the three layers together with a lot of clamps. And the goal is to have a, a really invisible glue line. And I've done a little experiment with a couple of scraps. Uh, and because this is such a fine grain wood, the glue line is, you, you can't even see it. So that's where we're going. Well, I sanded these in the, uh, the drum sander to 150, and then I hand sanded down to 220. I don't want to get it too smooth, but I'm trying for an invisible glue line. So now I'm going to go ahead and glue up, and just to make sure that the glue line is as thin as possible, I'm going to roll with a little foam roller, roll the glue to get a nice uniform thickness before I clamp. And 
I'm going to glue both sides Just like any glue up I do, I hope I've got enough clamps. Okay, so this is the concave side roughed out. And this is a good example of the Z-level roughing. It almost looks like a open pit mine where the levels, you know, every time the uh, depth goes down a quarter inch, um, the uh, profile gets smaller and smaller. Next, we're going to use the 1 8 inch tapered ball nose bit to actually carve the shape. Well, I'm done cutting the shell. I had to actually run a couple of routines back here to trim off these corners because this back part of the uh, of the uh, Z carriage was going to hit. And I thought it was going to be really close up here in the front, but we made it without having to carve any, any more clearance up here. This is about a quarter inch thick um, shell. And listen to this. like a drum so I hope it's not too thin but we're gonna find out I'll be taking this off of here and then cutting out the um, the outline just basically the tabs and uh, and then we'll see I cut the tabs off with a saw and a chisel and did a lot of sanding on this to get the uh, you know most of the little tool marks out and now I'm uh, giving it a little bit of a scalloped edge if you if you look at this end on you notice it's very flat, but if you look at a real shell, it has scallops, you know, up and down, little valleys. So I'm using the, uh, <clears throat> this Guinevere sanding set up here, and I'm just trying to shape these scallops a little bit. I think I've got it sanded down enough. You can see the, the ripples that I just sanded in. And uh, you know, I could keep going, but it's pretty darn smooth. So what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> I'm gonna use some water-based uh, spar urethane semi-gloss. And I'm trying to not overbrush because I don't want to get a lot of bubbles in this. 
Now this is supposed to be a crystal clear water base, but I'm sure it's gonna darken the, the holly a little bit. I uh, put three coats on there uh, because I wanted to seal the wood in case any water does leak through. And uh, I wanted to put the same number of coats on each side of this so that the tension of the finish as it dries is equal from, from top and bottom. And that way I wouldn't see any unusual warping of this piece. Now I'm trying to take this yellowish color and bring it up a little more white and also try to blur a little bit some of these glue lines. And so over here, you see I've done a little experimenting by mixing up some matte medium. This is Liquitex matte medium with a little bit of uh, titanium white uh, pigment in it and also added a little bit of this um, flow additive to help the uh, brush strokes level out a little bit. Hopefully that'll work. And, uh, but I didn't want it to be, you know, just like white paint. I want to have some translucency, a little less than glaze. Glaze as a matter of fact, this little area down here I glaze and you basically it's totally translucent. This is a little better what I want here. And so I will do the outside with this mixture. Uh, you know, I might do two coats, we'll just see. And then I'll flip it over, add a little more white pigment and do the inside prior to the final finishing of the inside, which is gonna be a pearly kind of a finish. I'm gonna be mixing up a glaze with some of the, uh, this pearlescent, powder, it's called Perlex. Um, mix a couple of different colors of this to, to make a nice pearly color like I have on this little sample here. Get that close. You can see a little pearly kind of color. So that's the plan. See how it goes. Well, I ended up putting two coats of this uh, white matte uh, finish on here, and it's pretty much what I wanted. A nice uh, base coat, but not just too much white, you know, in your face kind of color. And uh, I think later on I'll probably come along and do some other kind of coloring on this to make it a little more interesting, but for now that's good. Now I'll go to the inside. You can see the difference in color between that and the inside. And um, now I'll put a good white base coat, um, you know, with more pigment in it, because that'll be the base for the, the, um, the pearl finish that I'll follow up with. Okay, well I put two coats of this white uh, pigment with matte um, medium on here. So I got a pretty good white base for the follow on, which is going to be the, uh, you know, the pearlescent. So I'm going to take some of this white glaze that I had mixed up and I put a little bit of this flow aid into it. And then I'm going to take these two colors of, of this is a, a pearl pigment um, called Pearl X. And uh, one of the colors is micro pearl, which is kind of white. And the other is uh, interface gold. And uh, this is kind of a powder with uh, some sparkly stuff in it, a little bit of sparkly stuff. Not, not real, not like metal flake or anything, but just to give it a little bit of pizzazz. And uh, so I'll just mix some into this, this uh, you know, glaze 
that I made and then put it on and uh, just brush it on and let it dry. And I'll probably do a couple coats of that and that'll get me pretty close to, you know, what I had done here on this sample piece. You can see that got a little bit of pearlescent sh uh, shine to it. One side of this I actually finished off with a little bit of my um, my spar varnish, my water-based spar varnish. And so, you know, I kind of like that look. It's a little bit duller, but we'll see what it looks like on the final piece here. can see how this stuff just a kind of a powder mix that in okay so I put two coats of the pearl look with the white pigment in it and then uh, and that gives a pretty decent look compared to the unpearly side and then I decided I want a little more depth so I took a couple of different white pearl uh, tints of this Pearl X plus a couple of different golds and mixed it all together and let me see if I can show you what that looks like. It's got a good pearly look to it. And I have started to apply some of that. Now this is really subtle but here's the part I just applied and then here's the part that's still the, the original. And it just gives it just another hint of color. That's what we're trying to do with glazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole thing and see how that looks. Okay, so I've put on the two coats of uh, that last mix there, it had the uh, little bit of gold in it. And uh, you can see it's got kind of a pearly look. Now I'm not sure I absolutely like this. I'm gonna let this uh, cure some more, let the finish continue to shrink up some, and I may come back and even do another glaze coat, we'll see. Well, I wasn't too crazy about the, all the gold look that I had. Um, in you know in the pearly surface here so I decided I was gonna uh, lighten it up a little bit and so I mixed up some uh, uh, some of the uh, the lighter color of uh, of the pearlescent called micro pearl with uh, with the glaze and uh, coated it with that put two coats on and that um, that tends to uh, let some of the gold sort of show through but it really has that pearly look. So I think I'm there where I want to be on that. Um, now later on, I, you know, I, I may put some color on the bottom. I probably will, but I'm going to wait until the whole font is built because then I can kind of see, you know, what coloration and, and pattern and so forth would look right. So for now, uh, this is the end of this video of, of cutting the, the shell on the ShopBot desktop. Thank you.